Hello YouTube, D.E. Badger here. So this is my Little Machine Shop Model 7500 8x20 mini lathe. Um, I have had the thing since September of last year and so far it has made lots and lots of parts for me and done lots of cool things. So let me show you a few of those things that I have made with it. So this is a die follower and there's another piece that goes with it. There it is. So that is uh, whatever that is, MT2 taper which is what my tailstock has in it. So I jam that in there and then this is uh, I forget what they call this, it's a centering tool for your uh, for your tapers so you put that like in your your taper that's inside here and then you spin this and you can see how concentric or lack thereof things are but uh, yeah, it also worked for other things too. Namely, you know, I had this nice straight shaft, and I think I paid fifteen dollars or something for that. And then this is a piece of uh, actually not a piece of anything. <laughs> That's actually a, a high impact socket that I machined down the outside of it just to make it all look you know uniform. And what I really wanted was this hex pattern right here which is one inch so that you can put a die in there and then this whole thing you know with the handles you can either turn it or you can just like lock it to the bed or something like that and then this will follow the die when you're threading something on the lathe and then of course this whole thing get this out of the way that goes in there let me put this out a little bit. There we go. That goes in there. This slides on here. And it can slide out. And all you have to do is keep this from turning. Put a die inside there and that will thread onto some you know, steel rod or whatever uh, threads. So that's all that it is. Machine that on here works out pretty well. I've used it several times. For example, the reason why I made it was because of the uh, the long bolt that goes from here into here. I just used a piece of hardened steel shaft. I don't know what it came out of, um, but you know some scrounge piece I had and I needed to tap threads on the end of it uh, you know for M8. So I did. And so I did that on both ends. So this has got some M8 threads on the inside of that bolt, and of course there's some on that end as well. And I used my die follower to do it. So anyway, that's a simple project to build. Anybody can build one of these things. There's a thousand videos online on how to make a die follower. Uh, and they're super handy because it uh, makes your threads nice and straight. You don't get fed, fed on crooked, anything like that, because your die is completely trapped inside here. It can only go one way and that's straight on to your your piece of metal that you're trying to cut threads into. So if you don't have a die follower and uh, you are you know a hobby machinist or whatever or even a professional machinist you probably want a die follower. But uh, yeah mine is just a uh, you know a high impact uh, air socket you know one inch that I machined the outside of it off because this was all black oxide on here. So I machined all that off and then I needed to have the die only going so far. So down inside there, that's a piece of aluminum that I cut to be a little too large. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's probably like uh, one inch and a sixteenth or so bigger. And then I forced it down inside here so that it wouldn't move, it would be stuck. And then the dies just rest up against that. So there is no place for the die to go and it has to sit flat up against that piece of aluminum and then that also makes for a nice surface to ride on here as well not that I really care about that anyway that was super handy if you don't have a die follower make one they're not that hard uh, this is something that I bought so same idea uh, again this is that MT2 taper that's in here so pull that out with the taper and turn that out. There we go. 
So something I want to do different uh, with this, because this is an ER32 collet on an MT2 taper. And that is, there is no flange inside here that can trap things. Um, so like, this is my drill chuck. You know, it's got that flange on there, but there's nothing inside here <laughs> to fix on that flange. So the uh, if this were to jam up for some reason, it can spin loose of the taper inside here. So in between time, uh, so what I do is I just give whatever it is I have on there, you know, a, a tap with my copper hammer a couple times to try to wedge it really good inside the taper. But what I really need to do is to put a flange inside here, or a flange trap rather, uh, so that that's not a problem. But uh, in between time, uh, I will do that to this as well, but this ER32 collet chuck with that MT2 taper is the same thing. It goes inside there. And now I can use ER32 collets in here. And in fact, since I got this, which has been a month, I have not used the drill truck even once because that is so much nicer. <laughs> you know, it, it holds drills and mills or whatever you want, taps, way better than the drill truck ever did. And, you know, I, it works with my ER32 collet set, which I bought years ago, I guess 2019. So, inside here, there is a bunch of metric collets. And in the bottom section here, I've got all my SAE collets. But, uh, yeah, I have a great selection of ER32 collets. So, I'm just using them again in a different way, rather than holding a mill like I do in the drill press. So, this ER32 collet check in here, which is MT3, uh, hasn't come out of the check or hasn't come out of the taper ever <laughs> and I have machined and machined and machined on this thing hundreds of hours on my drill press and this has never come out anyway that ear 32 call it uh, was a great idea I do everything with this all drilling all milling everything all with that ear 32 call it so putting one in the tailstock of the lathe was a no-brainer and I also got this bearing nut and I have to say, I need more of them. <laughs> like two more of them. Uh, because I want one for this. And then I want one for that as well. Because, wow, this is such an improvement. You don't have to crank on the nut anywhere near as much. And because it spins, you know, this, this face plate here spins on the collet. Uh, it also clamps much better, much tighter. So, yeah, you don't have to crank on it so hard, and it bites down on the collet so much better. So you get much better clamping pressure on the collet. Gotta say, I need more of these. <laughs> Two more, at least, because they're way better than these cheapy nuts. You know, this is China-made, right? They work way better, and that's something that I think I spent 40 bucks on that bearing collet nut, but it's a huge improvement. Anyway, having... This uh, ER32 collet in my tailstock has given me another level of precision that I didn't have before without the hassles of a craptastic three-jaw chuck. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, here's something else I bought. And that again, both these things I bought them off of Amazon. I forget what I paid for this. It wasn't very much. It was like $30. And this was like $30. But this is a reduced center you know, live center. It's got bearings inside here. So it's got a thrust bearing in it and then two radial bearings in it. But, you know, with a smaller point, I can get in closer to end features. And uh, that's been nice. And also the uh, the live center that came with it. <coughs> There's that one. Yeah, being that this is so huge, getting in towards the end of something on the tailstock was a lot harder. So that other one with that reduced dent on it is much nicer. And also, this isn't concentric. <laughs> it came with a lathe and it wobbles. So yeah, <clears throat> didn't like that very much. That, that caused me tailstock working problems quite a bit. So anyway, again, this wasn't very much money. It was 30 or $40, huge improvement than the one that came with the lathe. So yeah, I think that's probably all the things I wanna show so far. Pretty happy with this. Uh, this tailstock, you can find these on Amazon. They're not very much money. 
and it's it's uh, three bearings inside, so that's the critical detail there. You know, it's got a thrust bearing and two radial bearings. But uh, yeah, all you people that are hobby machinists out there, get yourself a lathe if you don't have one, because this has been a huge. Well, it's been years since I wanted to buy a lathe, and now that I have one, it's like, how did I ever live without a lathe? Because I would have to say that uh, it's super handy. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I could not do, you know, on the drill press that I can now do on the lathe. So having both is a big deal. Having both is definitely a big deal. And the lathe has been a lot of fun. There's a lot of things I can do on here that I couldn't ever do before. So that's absolutely brilliant. And at the same time, like this opening in here that's behind this uh, brass nut, that feature, I did it on the drill press, you know, because I needed to machine out that hole. Um, the uh, slot in here, or the, uh, the tool holder piece right here, that I milled on the, on the drill press so I could clamp it in a tool post order. So, you know, there was operations that both of them were needed to make this one piece right here. And then, of course, with the four jaw chuck and an offset and everything, I could make those features for the bearings inside there. So, you know, both tools came in super handy for projects. And now I can do things that I've never been able to machine before with much level, higher levels of precision than I've ever been able to machine before.